In this tutorial we are going to do the review of this uh, back converter or a step down converter based on XL4015 which has constant current and constant voltage. We are going to test it and see what is the minimum and maximum voltage. We are going to connect it to different loads to see what is the maximum load or current it can handle and also I'm going to show you how to limit amount of output current using the constant current. So I'm going to show you the thermal image and see which part of this module heats up the most. I'm going to have a, uh, an efficiency and see how much power is wasted as heat here. Let's get started with this. Let me explain the module. This is labeled here as out and as you can see out here as well and that is the negative positive and here on this side we have the input positive and negative and this is the LXL4015 this is the main regulator you will connect the input here and that is the output and the maximum input regardless is determined by this capacitor which is 35 volts if you input more than 35 this capacitor will explode and this can handle up to 40 volts and here this is a uh, Schottky diode SS56 Yes, here is a picture that I took with my magnifier and here is the, the 5 ampere surface mount SS52 to SS56. This is a short key rectifier and the 56 is this one. Maximum voltage is 60 volts, RMS and DC is up to 60 volts and all of them they have the same 5 ampere current. I will also provide you the link for this. The item here, this is a LM358 that's dual operational low power operational amplifier. Here is a close up picture with my magnifying camera and here is a data sheet LM358N and it is a low power They've used this operational amplifier to control the current. And here, this is the 78L05. This is a 5 voltage regulator that is needed for the circuit. Here is a picture for that, 78L05. And here is the data sheet for L78L. They put L, this is the version that we are using and they are available with 100 milliampere for the 3.3 volt, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 18, even 24 volts. All those different values will be represented. And here is the, this pin is VN and out, ground is at the middle and then this point is also the ground. And this is TL4301. This is a precision programmable voltage reference. This has been labeled as 431. I try to keep it at a different angle. Here is a data sheet. Uh, th this can be set as a voltage reference up to 36 volts. I will provide you also the data sheet for this. The package that we have is this one reference anode cathode. Length of the module is 51.4 millimeters or 2.02 inch. Width of the module is 26.2 millimeters or 1.03 inch. Depth of the module is 16.6 millimeters or 0.65 inch. Depth of the module is 16.6 millimeters or 0.65 inch.
and this is a data sheet for XL4015 this is from Excel Semiconductor and the maximum current is shown to be 5 ampere the switching frequency is 180 kilohertz 36 volts DC to DC and the input adjustable voltage it says to be 1.25 to 32 volts but the design on this module might change it we will have a look at it and the maximum duty cycle in the password modulation that is controlling the output is 100 percent the minimum dropout is 0 0.3 which means the input and output and the um, smallest that you can get would be 0 0.3 volts And this is the package TO263-5L, which has five pins. And these are the pins, so ground, feedback pin, switching pin, internal voltage regulator, and VN. So these are the pins that is used. This is the function block diagram. And this is a typical application so because this is a back converter actually what we have here you see VN and then switch this is where the input enters from this MOSFET and then gets out from this switch if you pay attention here VN and it goes here and this is the inductor and this is a Schottky diode here so the determining factor for the voltage is these, these two resistors. Here are the, the input voltages that you can see up to six, uh, 40 volts at the input will be accepted. I will provide you the link in case if you want to have a look at this. So there will be a lot of questions people will ask me uh, if I connect this much what will be the output please watch the video if you pay attention and do not skip you get answer to all of your questions the only important thing that you should remember is that this is the input so the input voltage mul these two multiply will give you the power and then for the output you will get this is a power 2 times 8.9 that's 17.9 so the output this output can never be more than the input always the power is important doesn't matter if you put the voltage I or uh, current as long as the power is up and it's always if, only if you get 100% efficiency you get input equal output which is not the case we will not get any, anything with 100% efficiency so for that reason you always get 10 to 20 percent less than the input and here is the wiring my power comes a positive comes through this red wire directly here and the negative goes through this current meter is coming here that's the input and these two wires the output are connected to the load this is the electronic load DL3031 and these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here and we will see the voltage here and the current if you want to know how this is used I have separate video explaining this because I have burned uh, I believe three or four of these because every time when I was connecting it I was forgetting what wire to be connected to where um, it's not straightforward so make sure to watch that video the link will be below this video in the description this output voltage is being read here and the current the output current will be displayed here this is the input voltage and this is the input current right now there is no load the output is zero we are getting about about 0 0.04 or 40 milliampere because of this LED and internal circuit of this I am increasing the input this input making it 30 volts let's set the input 30 volts as you can see the output is stable so many times people will ask me question if we change the input what will happen to the output this is now set to 17 volts as you can see at 30 volts we are getting 17 at 29 at 28 26 still we are getting 17 until about 1 volt 
the difference between input and output then the voltage will change you see now 24 22 let's see at what voltage we get 17.3 So 17.3, 18, you see 17.4, 17.3, and now then it changed. Now the input is exactly at the output. So at 17 volts, let's see what is the minimum voltage that we can get. We can set the voltage from here. I'm going to use this flat screwdriver and let's read i'm going counterclockwise and you will read the voltage here 15 volts let me open the actual interface virtual panel this is better so let's decrease it minimum we can get is 1.24 so keep that in mind that's the minimum and with the 30 volts input the output can be the same as the input almost 100 millivolts less let me do it quickly 11 volts 24 almost 30.1 but this is without load once we put the load it might change everything now it's 2 ampere let's turn it on 2 ampere and uh, there is a little drop so this is the actual uh, voltage let me reduce it so 28 if I increase it and it will stop that is a voltage that it doesn't go 29.2, 6. It doesn't increase now. So 0 0.4 volts, 0 0.35 volts is the difference. So 30 volts versus 29. Now let me show you how we can set the limit so this doesn't allow extra current to the load. Let's say you want uh, uh, to connect this to a load that needs 15 volts and 1.5 ampere. First, let's set the voltage. I've set my multimeter to voltage and this is the output from this module connecting it. First, set the voltage. I've set it already, but adjust it with this potentiometer. Counterclockwise will reduce, clockwise will increase it. So let's set the voltage 15 volts. Now disconnecting this. Now I'm changing my multimeter to meter. I'm putting it in 10 ampere because the fuse is 10 ampere. Now this is cannot be connected. This is like a short circuit, very small load I'm gonna connect it anyways because you can connect you because this has constant current you can always connect it like a short circuit the protection you see kicked in and it will protect it so you do not worry I'm disconnecting it now and connecting it to my uh, multimeter which is a internally it's a short circuit now it just measures now it shows 1.9 ampere you see 1.29 and using this i'm going to reduce it counterclockwise will reduce let's say i want to put it at 1.56 or 1.57 that's the current 1574 milliampere so i have 74 milliampere extra so it allows 1500 milliampere now disconnected make sure to put multimeter back to voltage so you don't short circuit something 
Now I'm connecting a load here. And here you're reading the output voltage from this. So this is 15 volts, 15.3 volts the output. And now this is set to 1.5 ampere. I'm turning it on so you will see. We have 1.5 ampere here. It allows, this is allowing now 1.5. I'm here at the dot. 1.50. Let me slowly increase it so you will see here 1.51. And pay attention to this light, and also you will see the voltage will drop significantly to keep the current at 1.52. You see, we set it, I think, at 1.57. Let's see how accurate it is. Still, the voltage is there, so pay attention to the voltage and this light as well, increasing it slowly. You will see a little light here, 1.7, slowly, now it allows more. Now that the light turned on, if I go 1.8, reduce it back, so let's see at what value it triggered. 7, you see the light is dim, it's not fully, if I reduce it, the current still you see some dim light, uh, which means the, the uh, constant current has been triggered a little. The brighter it is, then the voltage will go to, the ze to zero. You see now it's getting brighter, 1.56, 1.57, very bright, 10 has been reduced to 10.8, and if I go a little more, you'll see it goes to zero. So it's fully on, and this is now protecting. fully though the light is off now it's at uh, 2 ampere let me rotate it fully so until it clicks now I can hear click Now, as you can see, the input is 30 volts, the output is 24. That's the first lower voltage, standard voltage after 30. So I'm going from 30, I'm going 24, 15, 12, and then 5 volts, and we'll see even 3.3 volts. Now I'm turning this on at 2 ampere. So, because I've set this to the to limit now let's increase the current fully though the light is off now it's at uh, 2 ampere let me rotate it fully so until it clicks now i can hear click now it's heating up significantly very hard to even handle now if this gets heat up the internal protection will turn off the output now it's 2 times 24 48 watts and you can see the input current 1.79 and the voltage is 30 volts it needs heat sink definitely because input can be up to 5 ampere it cannot be touched now let's have a look at it with thermal camera. I will share the image with you, but this one shows now 101 degrees. It shows 101 degrees. I took the picture and this spot is the chip itself. That is at 2 ampere. And here the operating junction temperature is 125 degrees, so it, has, so it has very little room. Let's go with 3 ampere. The voltage already dropped 0.2 volts. 
and as you can see the input current is 2.63 ampere so I'm expecting this to heat up very quickly and will shut off the output it shows at 107, 108 degrees, 109, heating up 110 111 wow It's heating up 113, 114, I can read. Hundred seventeen and hundred twenty-five. I hope it doesn't die. Hundred nineteen degrees. I will turn it off. As you saw the temperature was increasing, so three ampere is not okay. 2 ampere is nominal with current setting unless you put some kind of fan so 2.5 might work for a few minutes but steady current will be 2 ampere now input voltage is 30 volts output is 15 I'm going with 2 ampere and turning it on so now it's 2 ampere and 15 volts at the output input current is 1.2 ampere as you can see as you can see 91 degrees celsius now the coil is getting hot not the chip this coil is getting very hot and let's see 93 increasing ninety five ninety six degrees if the temperature steadily increase it means you cannot use it for that current ninety seven hundred and one degrees and the voltage is slowly dropping as you can see I'm turning it off two ampere will not work maybe one point six now it's 1.6 ampere and the input is 0 0.95 ampere still the coil the coil is still the hot spot 103 degrees see if it is not increasing So 1.5 will be better. At 1.5 we get we get 0 0.9 ampere at the input, and here is the output is 22.53 watts. Now input is 30 volts, output is 12 volts. I've set this to 1.5 ampere. Let's turn it on. zero point seven five ampere not as hot as before let me go one point six
So with the 12 volts, 0 0.75 ampere input, 1.5 ampere is okay, otherwise it's heating up. Now input is 30 volts, output 5 volts, 1.5 ampere. Let's turn it on. Let's go 2 ampere and see what is going on. So at 5 volts, 2 ampere, this voltage has been reduced a little. Let's see. Because th this is very small power, 10 watts, 2 times 5, 10 at the output. And here is the thermal image, 89 degrees. Temperature has been reduced, 87 degrees. That's better. So at 5 volts, 2 ampere, this voltage has been reduced a little. Now input is 30 volts, output 3.3 .3 volts with 2 ampere. Let me turn it on. The voltage has been reduced. With 3.3 .3 volts, this is a lot of reduction. 78 degrees. That's much cooler. It is now 3 ampere and input is 0.49 or 0.5 ampere. Let's see if this is heating up. It is seven degrees, eighty eight degrees. The coil and the chip are the hottest spot. 89, 90 degrees, 91 degrees, 92. Because the temperature is increasing, three ampere is not three ampere is not acceptable. So I will suggest using it only with two ampere. Now 0.33 ampere at the input. Now input 12 volts, output 9 volts, 3 ampere. Let me turn it on. The load is connected. The voltage has been dropped, 0.2 volts. Not good. As you can see, 2.7 ampere at the input. The chip is the hottest spot, not the coil. 62 degrees. Now 3 ampere is okay, let's increase it 4 ampere, but now if we go with 4 ampere, input is 3.34 ampere and the output is 4 ampere, the voltage has dropped 0.2 volts or 200 millivolts to drop here, almost 300 because I put it at 12.9.1 uh, very cool twelve volts input output is five volts with two ampere let me turn it on now it's at two ampere load is connected Input is 1 ampere, 1 times 12 is 12 watts, and then 2 times 5 is 10 watts. So 2 watts is being wasted here. I changed it to 3 ampere, 
a little voltage drop but let's see 12 now it's 1.51 1 ampere Now, in the temperature, the hottest spot is 68, 67 degrees Celsius. 68, it's steady. So, from 12 to 5, 3 ampere is okay. And now, input is 12 volts, output is 3.3 volts with 2 ampere. Let's turn it on. The voltage has been dropped. Now this is, you see, significant drop in voltage, but if I adjust it here, it will be artificial. So if I do 3.3 and turn it off, then the voltage will increase. 3.400 millivolts so 12 volts input input is 0.72 ampere output is 2 ampere with 3.3 volts Thank you for watching. This was the review of this XL4015 back converter or step down converter with constant current on this module. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, post it in the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. If you want to get updates of my upcoming videos, you may subscribe now.